The Sheikah tribe are known as the Shadow Folk, the reclusive, mysterious servants of the Hyrulean royal family. Though their most extensive appearance in the series to date is in Breath of the Wild, where they exist as an ancient, technologically advanced civilization responsible for the creation of godlike weapons of war. The Sheikah have existed in secret for the entire Zelda timeline, dating back to the era when the goddess Hylia herself walked the Earth. Until Breath of the Wild, we were only given glimpses of the Shadow Folk. The tribe are often represented by only a single living Sheikah. But during the late 2000s, there were plans for a Zelda game centered around the Sheikah, set in a desolated Hyrule sometime after the events of Ocarina of Time. The existence of this project was the subject of rumors for well over a decade. There are forum posts from around this time discussing the possibility that Retro Studios had been involved in the development of a new Zelda game. Retro were the team responsible for games like the Metroid Prime trilogy, so this understandably garnered a lot of attention, but evidently no such project ever came to light. This was until a concept artist involved in the project shared some of his work online. It has to be stressed that the artist himself admitted that this was very, very early concept art, and he doubts that Nintendo of Japan ever saw much, if any, of the project before it was shelved. But it is incredibly interesting. The art is much darker and more mature than we've come to expect from Zelda, and the story the game was apparently set to tell is centered around a fascinating part of the timeline that we really don't know enough about. So let's run through some highlights from this project's artwork, and look at the possible stories and ideas that this game was set to explore. The only real information we have on this game and its development comes from the posts by a concept artist on ArtStation, who shared his work on an untitled Zelda project that was apparently in the works from around 2005 until 2008, when it was shelved due to the project leads moving on to new companies. The artist deleted his ArtStation account after gaming websites caught wind of his artwork in May 2020. I don't know what the reason for this was, so even though it's already very public, I won't directly mention his name here. But he did work for Retro Studios on games like Metroid Prime 3 and Donkey Kong Country Returns, which adds a lot of legitimacy to his concept artwork. And a leak in 2021 seemingly confirmed that a game featuring Sheik was in development around this time. The deletion of the art station does unfortunately mean that a solid chunk of the work is now missing. I can't find the complete set of posts archived anywhere, so if you managed to download everything before it was deleted, leave a comment below or get in touch with me on Twitter. I'll leave links to articles covering these artworks in the description, as well as an archive of the surviving pieces. But regardless, a lot of the artwork does still remain, along with the captions and summaries given about it by the artist. So let's piece together what we can about this game, bearing in mind that this is very early concept work on a game that as far as we know never really began development. And even if it had, it might well have been little more than a spin-off or other non-canon entry in the series. The artist claims that the project was intended to tell the story of the origin of the Master Sword. Bear in mind that back then, Skyward Sword was still years away, so this wasn't a concept that had been fully explored at the time. It was apparently set to take place within the bad ending of Ocarina of Time, and would explore the journey of the last male Sheikah after a genocide almost wiped out their race. There's a bunch of concept artwork for this last male Sheikah, even one showing him holding a harp just like Sheik, which is a nice touch. Even more interesting is the note that this Sheikah man would have eventually transformed into the Master Sword, another idea which was explored later in Skyward Sword with Fee, the Spirit of the Sword. There's artwork apparently of some sort of forge, which might have played an important role in forging the protagonist into the Master Sword. Perhaps the lone Sheikah would have traveled the remains of Hyrule visiting these locations to temper himself into the Blade of Evil's Bane. It seems that the protagonist's cape would have been magical in some way. It's shown flaring out into a shadowy cloud in the piece named Cape Transition, and can be seen in this state in other sketches too. It's not absolutely clear whether this protagonist is the Sheik we know from Ocarina of Time, or a separate Sheikah entirely. His design is admittedly very different, but it could be that this was planned to be the Sheikah alter ego of a different Princess Zelda, or something completely different. 
The game being set after the bad ending of Ocarina of Time seems to suggest that it would take place at the beginning of the Downfall timeline, after the Hero of Time loses to Ganondorf. But there's concept art depicting Hyrule and Deku roots after the floods dry up, which would instead suggest that the game would take place somewhere in the adult timeline, perhaps after the Wind Waker, when the Great Flood sent by the gods has finally drained. Again, this artwork dates back to long before Hyrule Historia and the confirmation of a downfall timeline. It's very possible that, at this point, they were working with the idea of Ocarina of Time only having two endings. One following on from the game's events, where Ganondorf takes the Triforce of Power and seizes control of Hyrule, and one where Link travels back in time and prevents it. Which would mean that in this case, the bad ending would be the adult timeline. This could be supported by sketches of a dark Valu race, which seem to be enemies based on Valu, the sky spirit from the Wind Waker. While Valu himself was benevolent and peaceful by nature, his ancestor, Volvagia, was not. So this would have been a really interesting concept to explore. It seems that some of the game's main antagonists would have been the Dark Gerudo, who planned to give birth to Ganon once again. The Gerudo are of course the tribe of desert-dwelling warrior women to whom a male is only born once a century, a man destined to become their king. Ganondorf was born as the Gerudo male sometime before Ocarina of Time, and led his people to war against the King of Hyrule. The Gerudo are usually antagonistic to Link, but not truly evil, so it would have been great to see an iteration of the tribe truly dedicated to Ganon and his goals. And if this game was planned to be set sometime after the Wind Waker, by this time Ganondorf would have been killed by the Hero of Winds and turned to stone. So, giving birth to his reincarnation would make sense for the ultimate goal of a Dark Gerudo tribe. It's also worth noting that the Gerudo tribe are nowhere to be seen by the time of the Wind Waker. Ganondorf mentions them and their suffering as a motivation behind his actions, but we can't find them, or their descendants, anywhere on the Great Sea. And so a Dark Gerudo tribe appearing afterwards might have given us an answer to this mystery. Obviously, the style of this concept art is much darker than what we're used to, but we can see a lot of traditional Zelda elements here, like the petrified remains of a Deku tree. Of course, the Deku tree dies to Goma's infestation in all of Ocarina of Time's endings, though we see the Deku tree sprout grow to take its place by the time of the Wind Waker. Its design here is really strange, with its face enveloped in roots. It could be that the artist designed it to be the petrified remains of one of the Deku trees we've seen, or something else entirely. Here there's what we can assume is Hyrule Castle, which rests atop a high cliff overlooking fields, much like its Wind Waker appearance. There's also artwork of the Kindler Fish, some sort of flying whale similar to the Windfish, sketches of Deku warriors, and one titled Ocarina Boy, showing a figure playing a familiar looking instrument. But there's also a huge amount of completely new ideas, like Horntown, a strange, wild settlement on a plateau littered with huge horns, Rhinotaurs, a gigantic armoured monster presumably somewhere between a rhinoceros and a minotaur, a piece showing eerie ruins in the shadows of what looks like a giant isopod, axolotl warriors, whimsy wyverns, and a condor clutching what is apparently the key to a dungeon in its talons. Also interesting is a collection of artworks of various spirits, all resembling wolves or other quadrupedal animals. Twilight Princess launched in 2006, and heavily featured the idea of wolf spirits, so it's possible that this idea carried over into Retro's Sheikah project. The spirits are shown in various stages of light and darkness. There's a fully light one, a fully dark one, and one in between, as well as a cursed spirit choked by dark red tendrils. And there's artwork showing us ideas that we can only guess at, like this. A bright white figure brandishing the Sheikah eye symbol, presumably the protagonist, facing off against a shadowy cloaked figure with tentacles in a cave. Or this, what might have been a completely bizarre, futuristic take on Majora's Mask's Clock Town. Overall, the concept artwork gives us a glimpse at what could have been an incredibly interesting project, set during a relatively unexplored period of Zelda's history, painted in a style unlike anything we've seen from the series this far. 
Unfortunately, this is probably the only look we'll ever get at this shelved project. Miyamoto has at some points mentioned that they were interested in developing a game centred around Sheik, and that they were open to working with Retro Studios on the production of a Zelda game, but as far as we know, this particular idea was completely scrapped. The Zelda team are notoriously protective over their property, and very rarely do other studios get the chance to work on games in this series. This does mean that whenever we do get new Zelda games, they're almost always masterfully crafted experiences, but we're often left waiting years between main series entries. I'd personally love to see more ideas like this Sheikah project explored, even as spin-offs or non-canon entries in the series, wildly unique and different takes on the Zelda universe and story. What do you think? Would you have liked to see this project get further into development? What do you think about the artist's ideas? Let me know in the comments down below. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.